Good evening, Internet. My name is Craig Chamberlain, and this is the PCM Tech Help Show. Hopefully you all made it here to the video on the event page, which the event page is all over Google+. If you don't know where it's at, look me up. Craig Chamberlain. Google me. Check out my event page. That's where it's at. Also, you can check them out on YouTube after the show's over, pcmtechhelp.com forward slash YouTube. And I'm excited about this entire week, in case you guys haven't noticed. A lot of great things going on this week. A lot of WordPress stuff. At the end of the week with David Oldenburg, when we talk about some new topics, some interesting topics, we're going to be talking about reinventing yourself because a lot of people out there are trying to recreate their professionalism, especially with the economy being where it's at, the insanity that's going on in the world around us as it crumbles apart. So this goal, the goal of this show is to give you guys professional training for business and technology. And I talk about many, many topics here, and I live and thrive off the question and answer segment of this show. So make sure you guys post questions on the Q&A section of the show so that I can answer your questions during the show. Today we're talking about WordPress plugins, and WordPress plugins can be both simple and complex, but it's the do's and don'ts of WordPress plugins. My goal here is to get you guys informed. Check out this book. If you don't, if you don't have a book on WordPress yet, buy one. Because these things, these books, they really help. I'm telling you guys, make sure you have a book. This is WordPress, the missing manual. It's what I use to build all of these videos on WordPress throughout this week. And I am in an interesting mood tonight. So we'll see how this goes. And again, ask all of your questions. I appreciate all of your questions as part of the show. And uh, check out all of the wonderful things we have to offer at the uh, channel. So let's go ahead and get started here. WordPress plugins. What's a plugin? Okay, essentially a plugin for WordPress is a add-on feature because WordPress, the reason we love WordPress, the reason I sold you guys on WordPress in the first videos we talked about in this entire series of videos we've been doing on WordPress, the first thing I told you guys was that it's expandable, right? You can actually make WordPress work for you, right? You can customize it. You can go in and tweak and modify and really kind of make it really, really powerful. And uh, we're going to be talking about a few other plugins later this week, but today we're going to talk about plugins in general. There are thousands of plugins in the WordPress market, and they do a really good job of vetting them. But I'm going to show you guys some things you should be aware of when you're going through this whole WordPress thing and uh, some considerations that come into that, because these plugins are great. Uh, they are the reason I love WordPress. As a single individual, for example, as a guy just sitting in his basement doing a live broadcast, I can build a website that has a huge amount of functionality to it. We're talking communities, we're talking embedded forms, we're talking embedded shopping carts, we're talking almost anything you can imagine you'd want on your website, there is a plugin for it. And these plugins are readily available for free. 99% of the plugins out there are completely free. Free. And you know what? That's what we love. That's what I love about WordPress. I don't want to go out and spend $10,000 on a website that has a shopping cart in it. So reason we love WordPress, reason I love WordPress is all of these plugins are out there and they're all completely free. Now, there are some that are paid for, but that's a very small handful and you really won't even go out and buy those unless you're already in the business, guys. And that's what we're talking about here on my show, right? And this is what I'm really trying to get to is that I've been using WordPress for eight years, and there's almost nothing it can't do. Almost. There are things it can't do. But my goal here is to get you guys informed on, like, all the slew of information out there about this technology. I cannot believe my mind boggles on a day-to-day -day basis about all this crap i got to filter through in order to find decent content on the Internet anymore. It's, it is just amazing. Absolutely amazing what you have to jump through, what kind of hoops you have to jump through to find any kind of decent information. Thank goodness for Google+. Plus. That's all I'm going to say about that. So let's go ahead and get started here. I'm going to do a screen share during the show so that you guys can take a look at what I'm looking at. And what I'd really like to do here is pull up my browser. Because if you haven't followed any of our earlier videos so far, we have essentially... Uh, gone over a bunch of stuff, uh, a bunch of stuff, and guys, go back and watch this stuff. I take the time and do it. I mean, take the time out of your. If you're at at all remotely interested in WordPress, I cover so much stuff in this that I can't even 
begin to say. But the day one stuff is introduction to XAMPP. This is building your own web server on your computer. Day two was introduction to installing WordPress. Day three was introduction to WordPress posts and themes. Day four was introduction to WordPress pages and multimedia. And yesterday we talked about the introduction to WordPress comments and spam, building your comment management system right within your WordPress installation. Got tons of information we've got going on up here uh, at the show. Uh, and of course, the rest of this week, today we're talking about plugins. Tomorrow we're talking about WordPress caching plugin, WP Total Cache. And you guys, if you are using WordPress, do not miss this video. Do not miss this video. I have been ripping my hair out with the WP Tolo Cache plugin for about a year, and I finally figured out how to get the dang thing set up. You do not want to miss that one because I'm going to share with you guys some invaluable information. Caching is going to make your site a million times faster. WordPress SEO optimization with Craig Fifield on Thursday. Don't miss that one. He is the guru of optimization for search engines. Get to number one rankings. He's going to teach me a lot of things as well. So expect a lot of excitement on the show that oh. night. Thursday will be with David Oldenburg. It says to be announced. I'm announcing it right now. We're going to talk about reinventing yourself. We're going to take a step back from WordPress for an evening of reinventing yourself. David Oldenburg has an awesome personal story about how he left the broadcasting world and is now in the process of reinventing himself. It's going to be an awesome, awesome video. And remember, all these videos are right here at the event page. You're looking at it right here. This is the event page. If you're here, you're in the right place. If you're not, you can be on my YouTube channel. Totally fine. There'll be a link to this event page on the YouTube channel. Now let me pull up my local host so I can show you guys my browser here. Here it is. XAMPP for Windows. We installed this before, but I'm going to pull up my, um, I'm sorry, I'm going to pull up my installation of WordPress. And this is what you guys will all be familiar with. This is what you guys usually see when you are using your WordPress. Hopefully your site looks a little bit better than this one. This one looks hideous, but it was my test site. It's what we walked through to kind of experiment, and so it really reflects that quite well. Let me go to the dashboard here because we're more concerned with the functionality of our WordPress installation than we are with the actual you know, prettiness of it at this point. So if I go to Appearance, then I would be going to the wrong section because today we're talking about plugins. So if I go to Plugins and select it, you'll notice that you are greeted with all of the plugins that are currently installed. Now, basic information here, guys. This is where your activated and deactivated plugins are. As you can imagine, if something is activated, it is activated. If something is deactivated, it is deactivated. So if you see the activate button, it's not currently active. If you see the deactivate button, it is currently active. Yesterday, we talked about a kismet in Cloudflare. I recommend everybody who has a WordPress site have those plugins because those plugins will help prevent spam. Now, how do plugins work? How do they work? Well, it's a little bit of magic that goes on behind the scenes in WordPress. They have this nice little layer in there for people who are engineers and developers, and they can go in and they write a plugin. Basically, a plugin will go in there and it'll actually auto-apply itself to the code of the page wherever the developer wants it pasted. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Oh, what about security? Well, of course, there's security concerns with plugins, and that's why you go through the right channels. You usually go through the WordPress website, and you always make sure to read reviews, something you always want to take into consideration. Always word of mouth as well. So if I recommend a plugin, it's pretty well vetted. So always, always consider that and do some research here. I mean, you guys have, might have to go out and do a little bit of homework about some plugins, and that's really uh, part of what we're going to talk about today is doing some proper research. Now, on the left-hand side here, you'll notice I have installed plugins, add new, editor, and Cloudflare. Let me go to add new first. I'm going to show you guys how to add a plugin to your site. Yesterday we added one. We added a Kismet, and yesterday we added Cloudflare. But for those of you who are new, I'm going to show you the magic of the install plugins search function. And the magic really comes into your imagination. We say SpongeBob like imagination. Okay? And now that I lost 10 subscribers because I quoted SpongeBob, let's go ahead and take a look at what we have here. Let's say you want a plugin that will modify, completely revamp your comment system. Let's say you hate the default WordPress comments. Let me pull up my website here. Let's say I open up this post and I scroll down and I look at this comment system and I'm like this is this is terrible. I hate this comment system. I want my people to be able to log in through social media. I want it to be more engaging. I want it to be more interesting. I want it to be more dynamic. Let's say there's something with your site you just don't like. 
Okay, let's start with comments. I'm going to type in the word comments. I'm going to press enter. Here's the beauty of this entire system right here. We immediately are given a list of plugins that are available. And these are all from the WordPress directory, so they've been vetted for the most part. Some of them are new, some of them are old. But really what you want to look at here is you want to look at your ratings, of course, right? But don't be don't be mis don't be deceived here by the rating. You're like, "Oh, five stars. That's awesome." Now click details. And notice this little highlight right here. It's based on three ratings, okay? Three ratings, okay? That's not very many ratings, okay? And another thing I like about this page is when you click on details, you can go into some really good information here, and they'll tell you exactly what this one does. It was last updated two weeks ago, which is a good sign. Remember, you want to go with a plugin that is regularly updated. It's compatible up to 3.8, which is hopefully the version you have. And if it's only older versions, then there's cause for concern. There's a version number, which isn't really that important to you unless you know a lot about this plug plugin's history. And then if you scroll down, you can read the entire description of it. But three ratings, I'm not big on that. At the top, we can click Installation. And this will tell you how to do a manual installation, custom installation. Gives you a lot of details. Be ready to read, guys. If you're going to install a plugin, read all this information first. Go to Screenshots. Manage your subscriptions. This gives you cool little pictures of what you can expect to come out of the plugin. And that's always a positive when they have screenshots. They don't always have them. Change log. This is actually the patches and stuff that they've uh, revised. So you can kind of get a history of the plugin there. Frequently asked questions is this is actually a website at, that, in, and this is what amazes me about WordPress guys, uh, is that people don't realize how well documented a lot of these plugins are. And they never go to this this part of it. They never go to frequently asked questions. They never go to other notes. They never go to the change log. Because uh, in the change log, they'll say known issues that we're working on, things like that. You'll get an idea if they'll ever update it. Frequently asked questions, believe it or not, this section has saved me numerous times when I've installed a plugin and had problems with it. And they put this here for a reason. So just keep that in mind. There are FAQs for a lot of the plugins. And then you got other notes, description, and things like that. So this is just an example of one of the plugins here. So if I scroll down through here, we'll notice that there's a lot of interesting plugins here. But at the top, I'm more interested in the popular ones. So I'm going to click Popular. And then we get into something a little more interesting. Here we have WordPress SEO by Yoast, Contact Form 7, all-in-one SEO pack. And now what I did here is, and then I'm going to point this out here because it's really annoying. And you guys might not even realize this is happening. When I click popular, it eliminated my search. This is one of the most frustrating things you will find with this plugin uh, issue. Is if I do comments, for example, it doesn't automatically sort properly, right? So here, it, it's just it's just a frustrating aspect of this plugin search. Obviously, nothing in this is really uh, perfect, but uh, this is one of the most frustrating things you'll run into. Is when you do a search, you can't really sort very well. You can sort by tag, keyword, or author. You can do different search type, but that's about it. See, if you, even if I go to screen options, it doesn't really give me very many options. So this is a great place to do all your installations of your plugins from, but it's very difficult to find anything decent. This is like this is a great tool if you know what you're going to download. So then, then you're like, okay, Craig, well, what should I download? Let's say I hate my comment section. Where should I go? That's an excellent question. You go to Google, and then you type in top comment plugins WordPress, or you type in whatever you're interested in for WordPress. Google is your best friend, guys. It's the ultimate research tool. It is the single most powerful research tool in the world. No other mini search, no other network, no other anything is going to give you the information that you want as accurately as you want it. So I type in top comment plugins, and this is just me throwing something out there. You can say top uh, form plugins. You can say top spam WordPress plugins. Just make sure you got WordPress and plugins somewhere in there. And then, of course, the first result is five essential WordPress plugins. So I'm going to click on that link. And I'm going to scroll down here. We have GASP. It's a Grow Map anti-spam plugin. I can read a little bit about it. You can check out the tips. Comment Love. 
Law's commenters add their latest blog links to their comments. Akismet, of course, which I recommend yesterday on the video. Subscribe to comments. Let's people subscribe to comments. See, this is a perfect example of a plugin that I'm like, oh, that would be cool. I didn't even think to have that feature. This will happen to you a lot when you're using WordPress, by the way. Twitter link comments. It adds an additional way for your site's community members to connect with each other through their Twitter accounts. So there's a few comment plugins, okay? But don't just stop at one list, guys. There's so many good comment systems out there. Let me click the 10 best comment plugins for WordPress. And I'm going to scroll down here. Comment rating lets people rate comments. Comment love. WP paginate. Absolute comments. Quote comments. No comment. WP comments remix. Live comments. Subscribe to comments. Sticky comments. And we'll keep going. We'll keep going. We'll keep going. We'll keep going through all of these really quick. This is going to be the last one. Best comment plugins for WordPress. Discuss comments. Google Plus comments. The stylish Google Plus comments can be seamlessly added to your blog. Now your visitors can easily leave comments to your posts using their Google Plus profile. And I'm actually going to be putting this on my blog soon because I love Google Plus. I love it, love it, love it. Facebook comments, Jetpack comments, Birdo Twitter comments. Here's the point, okay? This is the whole point I'm trying to make here. Plugins are very, very plentiful in availability, and they're very, very dynamic. And so, as a result, you can literally almost do whatever it is you want to do. So let's say I want to implement this Google Plus Comment plugin. Rather than go download it through this site, I like to go back to my actual search here in the plugin section. I'm going to type in Google Plus Comment. And I'm going to see if it comes up, because they don't always register to it just as a warning. And I notice I don't see it here, which usually isn't a good sign because I always like to see it there. That makes me nervous. So I clicked on it again, and then I see here that the comment plugin is actually part of this plugin called Comments Evolved for WordPress. And it says right here, Comments Evolved, formerly Google Plus Comments for WordPress. I'll go back to my install here, Comments Evolved. Do a search for that, see if it comes up. See if it comes up. Did it come up? It looks like they haven't even indexed it. So this is the kind of stuff you will run into. Okay, I just want you guys to be aware of this. What you are most concerned about is if it's not on this list, it doesn't mean it's a bad plugin, guys. This is just stuff that's been actually indexed by the WordPress directory. And if it's not in there yet, it doesn't mean it's not going to be. So now I can scroll through here. I can say, okay, great. This is the pro plugin that I want. It is at WordPress.org. Go up here, make sure it's at WordPress.org, top left corner. Click download the plugin. I'm going to download it to my desktop. And then I'm going to go back to my website, and I'm going to click add new again on the left-hand side, and then I'm going to choose this nice little upload option. Of course, then I'm going to choose choose file, and I'm going to locate the file that I downloaded, which, by the way, is always a .zip file. Do not decompress the folder. The folder includes everything that you need to implement this plugin. Okay, so I'm going to click open, and then I'm going to click install now. And it does the unpacking, like I told you, it unzips it for you. It installs the plugin, which is pretty much it just copying the files. Then the plugin's installed successfully. Now you get to choose to activate it. I'm going to go ahead and activate it. And then let's take a look at what we have here. Comments evolved for WordPress. Comments Evolved for WordPress adds the ability to enable native WordPress, Google+, Facebook, Discuss, Live Fire comment systems easily. So, of course, as with most comments and plugins, you're going to have to go to the settings first. They don't always give you this pretty little settings bar here, though. I've gotten pretty lucky with these. Notice that Cloudflare doesn't have a settings option. Notice that Akismet doesn't have a settings option. Sometimes you've got to go looking for it, and this is part of the plugin developers. Sometimes they just stick it in the weirdest places, and you've got to go hunting for the plugins. It's frustrating, but you can find it. It is out there. It's somewhere. But I'm going to go ahead and click Settings for Comments Evolved, and it lets me go ahead and choose which order I want my plugins. Remember, if I have any questions, I'm going to go back to this WordPress page, and I'm going to check out all of the documentation here. I've got installation notes. I've got frequently asked questions. Quite a few of them, actually. Very nice. Very nice FAQ section. i got screenshots, so I get an idea of what it's supposed to look like. So let me go ahead and say, this all looks good. I'm going to save changes. Now let's see if it automatically implemented itself. Let's pull up my blog, visit site. I'm going to click on my post. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom, 
And it did. It automatically implemented my comment system. Check that out. Since I'm already logged into my Google Plus account, I can actually already post a comment based on Google Plus. If I click Facebook, I'm going to have to log in, but I'm already logged in. I can do WordPress comments still. So this is, this is what I mean by the full dynamic range of plugins. Now we're going to go into more specifics about the do's and don'ts of plugins here shortly, but in a nutshell, that's how you do a basic installation and hunt for decent plugins. Those of us who are masters of plugins, we've been using WordPress for years. Okay, Those of us who are masters of that, we still use Google, we still do our homework, we still go out and research all of these plugins, and we constantly are reevaluating the plugins that we are using on a regular basis. That's something very important for you guys to be aware of. This isn't a one-time deal. This is, in fact, a let's make sure that I'm doing the right thing with plugins consistently over time. I can't tell you how many times I've gone back and reevaluated. Am I still using the best plugin for comments? Am I still using the best plugin for uh, email lists? Am I still using the best plugin for uh, comment sections, for spam filtering, for all of these awesome things. And really, the sky is the limit. Your imagination is the limit when it comes to WordPress. That's why us geeks love this. Because you don't have to know how to code any of this stuff. I can actually come in here and, and literally build a website that, that my imagination is the limit to the potential. Now, there are limitations to this. We're going to talk about them here in a little bit. But first, I want to get to your guys' question. It's my favorite part of the show. So if you guys are interested, curious, doesn't have to be about the topic at hand, by the way. Just post your questions, and we will get to them. Megan S. says, how did you get so awesome? Why do you think you have so many followers on Google Plus? Well, I don't know. I honestly uh, don't know the answer. It's kind of weird that you say that. I'm, I'm probably, I cannot believe that I have as many Google Plus followers as I have. Uh, and honestly is a constant search for the stuff that I think is the coolest stuff on the internet and I share it and other people think it's awesome and it just works out in that way. Uh, but it comes down to doing what I'm doing and, and awesome is an opinion. So I'm really glad you think I'm awesome. I'll take the compliment. I appreciate it. Megan S. also says, how do I delete a Google page? You have to go through a couple of hoops here. You have to make sure you're logged in as the page. Then you have to go to the settings portion of the page. And then you have to scroll down all the way to the bottom of the settings page. And then you actually there's a button that says delete this page. And it's going to walk you through a whole bunch of warnings. And then there you go. You'll be good to go. Thomas McGawkin says, posting this here now, I got to go. It's a downer, but I'll definitely watch tomorrow. Thanks for coming out, Tom. I appreciate you making it for as long as you could. Nathaniel McNaughton says, can you put more than one website on your Bluehost subscription? I'm glad you brought up Bluehost, Nathaniel. I have used Bluehost web hosting for eight years. And as you guys know, I've used WordPress for eight years. And the coolest thing or the best thing about Bluehost is if you're serious about your website, if you're serious about making it work, making it function, and get it all done, join Bluehost. Go through my affiliate link in the event description. That way I get credit for it. But to be honest with you, I call these guys at least once a month. They walk me through issues that I'm having. They walk me through plugin issues. They walk me through WordPress conflicts. They have the best support. It's so hard to find good support these days. It's ridiculous. I don't know if you guys, I'm kind of in a weird mood tonight. I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but it's been, it's, it's frustrating. If you guys are out there trying to really kind of build something from the ground up and you try to, you buy something off of somebody, a product, then you try to get a hold of them and they just don't even give you the time of day. It's one of the most frustrating experiences on earth. And I have not had that happen to me once in the eight years I've been part of Bluehost. So join them like yesterday. Can you have more than one site? Yes, of course you can. You can have many, many, many sites on Bluehost. So, uh, they, they actually, WordPress has a lot of, it, it's funny you bring that up. Speaking of plugins, they have multi-site plugins, which actually lets you build a number of different websites under a single domain. Uh, look up or Google top multi-site WordPress plugins, and you will get to see all of the wonderful tools that are available to you that will actually let you install multiple instances of WordPress on a single domain. Very cool stuff. James Lynch Jr. says, Craig, with your advice, I revamped my WordPress homepage. Thank you. James, share a URL. I'd like to take a look at it. And I'm sure all of our viewers here would like to take a look at well. Post it in the event page. We will check it out. And uh, you're welcome. 
I'm glad it helped. Somebody leveled, I like the name, by the way. Are 3D TVs outdated because of 4K TVs? No. Uh, 4K TVs are going to take quite a bit of time to catch up because, let's face it, 4K actually needs the technology recorded, broadcasted, filmed, edited, uh, processed, and all of that in 4K. It's going to take quite some time for 4K to actually finally catch up to Blu-ray. Uh, but no, it's going to be some time before that happens. Years. Quite a few years. Netflix jumping on the 4K bandwagon doesn't hurt, but to be honest with you... Um, Pretty much all of Hollywood and all of them have finally caught up to Blu-ray, and they're not going to invest any money in it until they know for a fact we're going to buy the hardware for 4K televisions. So 4K televisions are great. They're beautiful, amazing picture. I think it's incredible. If you ever make it out to a store to check one out, they're awesome, but here's the catch. Don't be <laughs> deceived by the salesman when he tells you, oh, yeah, don't worry, it up-converts to 4K. That's a lie. Okay, that's a lie. All that means is, is it takes a little picture and stretches it. And if you know anything about math, if you know anything about pixels, if you know anything about the technology out there, don't let these people lie to you. Upconverting is just a way of stretching an image and filling it in the best you can to make it look as best as possible. You are not going to get, with a 4K TV, a 4K picture unless that picture is broadcasted in 4K or if your DVD player outputs to 4K from a Blu-ray, not Blu-ray actually, from a DVD, or actually I think Blu-rays are out there, that actually has 4K footage on it. I'm not talking about something up-converted. So think, think about it. Think about it for a minute. Adam Trailer says, to further stress Craig's point that he has made a lot on this video, WordPress is limitless, but it's not for the lazy. It's going to take some time on your part, but not nearly as long as learning to code. Excellent, excellent way to put it, Adam. Um, this is an amazing tool. It's an amazing platform. Uh, and there's a lot you can do with very little knowledge of programming, very little knowledge of setup. But you really want to have to be willing to learn how these plugins are set up, how they work with your website, and how to go in and, and change the settings at the very least. If you want some advanced tweaking where you really kind of get into the code and do some modifications, then things get more complicated. But to be honest with you, out of the box, it is a very powerful tool, and there's a lot of plugins out there that will do your job for you. But it's not for, like he said, the lazy person. You do want to make sure you're doing your homework on these plugins. It's very important. Very, very important. Megan S. says, thanks. No problem, Megan. Andrew Tangen says, otherwise, looking forward to seeing your video today. And he was referring to the, what was the download for the Google plugin search? There was no download for that. I just used www.google.com. And I searched for WordPress plugin you guys fill in the blank with whatever your mind can even think of. There are hundreds of thousands of plugins out there now, and and I swear to you, there's almost nothing that I've thought of that isn't already available in some way, shape, or form. So I just use a standard Google search. Steve Wheeler says, hello again. Hey, Steve, welcome back. Somebody leveled says, hey, I got a question. What's your opinion on the people and places that buy used technology, GameStop, eBay, Acquaintances, and Best Buy? I'm a huge fan of used technology. I got no problem with used technology. I think it's fantastic that you can buy used technology. I think if the manufacturers of our time, the Verizons, the Comcasts of our time, could get away with forcing us to buy only new technology, they would. In fact, your GameStops, by the way, with the video game industry, they would love for you guys to be on the Steam platform for their consoles. They actually tried it this time around and failed, where you have to go out and buy a new copy of everything. They'd love it more than anything. My opinion is... I hate the idea of not being able to give somebody to a buddy of mine, sell something to a buddy of mine, or sell something on Craigslist. I, I hate the idea of not being able to do that. Used technology is awesome. I live and die off of it. That and refurbished technology, awesome stuff. I'm cheap, so... <laughs> so yeah, Albert Meza says, How do you handle creative content on your website? Do you assume everything you create in WordPress is automatically copyrighted? If not, how do you personally go about it? Everything is automatically copyrighted. Everything you put on the internet is automatically copyrighted. Um, look up something called the Creative Commons. You can... I don't want to say it's blanketly copyrighted no matter what you do. 
Uh, but look up Creative Commons licensing, and you can put a Creative Commons licensing on your site that specifies the exact type of rights. Hey, hey, let's use this as an opportunity. I'm going to pull up my page here, and I'm going to go to Google again, and I'm going to type in Creative Commons WordPress plugin. I'm just, I'm just guessing here, by the way. Creative Commons Configurator. Let's pull that up. Let's see what that is. Okay. Creative Commons Configurator is the only tool a user will need to in order to set a Creative Commons license on a WordPress blog and control the inclusion or display of license information on relevant metadata. So let me go ahead and go to screenshot so I can take a look at what it actually does. I'll pull up the image. And it looks like it lets me include license information on the page's header, including license information on the blog feeds. Okay, cool. That looks awesome. Now let me try it out. Now I'm I'm zipping through this, guys. Don't don't do what I'm doing right now. <laughs> Read more about the pro, pro uh, plugin. But I'm giving you guys a perfect example of how this works with these plugins. I'm gonna download the plugin. I'm gonna go back to my site. Uh, I'm gonna go to plugins. I'm going to add new. I'm gonna go to upload again since I downloaded that plugin. I'm going to scroll down to Creative Commons Configurator. I'm going to click Install now. Activate the plugin. Okay, Creative Commons Configurator is installed. I'm going to click Settings. Looks like I have to get a license, so I have to say New License. See what it makes me do. And it's going to ask me to go through WordPress or creativecommons.org. That's a good sign. It will help me share my work. Do you want to allow commercial uses for your work? Yes or no? I can say no. Do you want people to allow modifications of your work? Yes, or yes as long as they share alike, or no. You can basically specify how you want it set up. Jurisdiction. You probably want to keep with uh, international, so it's worldwide. I have selected attribution commercial. I may now proceed. And this is what's amazing about these plugins. A lot of this stuff's taken care of for you. Now look at this. It created a little logo for me. It actually shows the licensing that's on my site. Now if I scroll down, I can decide where I want it on this plugin. Sure, I'll include it there. I'll include it in the header. And let's scroll down and see what else we have here for some options. I want it included on in the posts. It says, enable a small block of text which contains the link author will be used, worked and used license and appended to published content. Posts, actually I'll take it off the header and I'll put it in the posts. Save changes. Let's check this out. Visit the site. Open a post. Scroll down. And see if it put it in here somewhere. I don't know if it's going to or not. I haven't used this plugin before. So it's really hard to tell. I might have to edit my post and add it. See, this is why you read the documentation. Perfect example. Okay. Looks like I can go down here and say use the default Creative Commons license that has been set in general settings. Looks like it, it adds this to your post page. Notice this. This plugin actually adds a nice little feature down here where I can change the licensing as I'm doing my posts. Let's pull it up here. View post. See if we can locate it this time. There it is. It says it right here. This work, unless otherwise expressly stated, is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial International License. I can click on that, and it'll actually show exactly what my licensing agreement is. This is the perfect example of within how many seconds? How many minutes did that take, guys? How, how long did that take me? Maybe, maybe a minute. Maybe a minute. Perfect example of the power of WordPress. You guys just witnessed it yourself. It's exactly why I love the WordPress platform. Now, of course, I recommend reading more about the plugins. Don't just jump in, start adding stuff, taking stuff away. Do a little bit of homework first so you can find the best one for what you want. Uh, but if you have an offline test site like I am doing right now, you can play around with everything. There's like literally, like I said, no limit to what you can do with this software if you're willing to sit down and play around with it. Andy Parker says, do you try to avoid plugins that stress any particular platform or technologies like Flash or JavaScript? Me, personally, no. Um, because I do a lot of my embeds directly through YouTube. Uh, so I grab the embed code outside of it. Uh, JavaScript, eh, it depends on the plugin, depends on what it does. If the plugins are highly rated, nine times out of ten, they do not use dated technologies. Uh, but you can use something called... Uh, What's it called? It's a load dot, loads.in, L-O-A-D-S dot I-N. 
And what I like to do is I like to actually go in and check, using loads in, uh, the speed of my site after I install a plugin. And that'll actually run a full speed test on your site. You can start to see if some of the code that you've added from plugins is actually starting to draw out the load time of your site. It's one of your considerations to take into place. Uh, but obviously, Flash has a limitation for mobile devices and things like that. So it's always something to take into consideration. But me, it depends on your audience. Albert Meza says, will the upcoming demise of Windows XP in any way compromise WordPress? No. WordPress is fully compatible, and it works on a browser environment, not on a uh, operating system environment. It works in your browser. <clears throat> James Lynch Jr. says, Craig, this is a FYI. Some hosting websites are a little behind. I'm not sure what you mean by hosting websites. Maybe plugins. Yes, there are, but I still am a huge fan of uh, Bluehost, um, and they aren't behind as far as I'm concerned. Uh, they're doing a very good job, especially if you're considering WordPress. Andrew Tangen says, thank you, no problem. Uh, Andrew Tangen says, I clicked on the YouTube video to view it on my tablet. It says, unsupported format. What does that mean? It means that Google is dragging their feet on these events and hangouts on air, and unfortunately, they're not always available to tablet and mobile users while we're live. But something you should know is when it's uploaded to YouTube after the fact, it will be available. For, the, for you guys that are joining in this show, by the way, all of the videos are going to be on my YouTube channel, pcmtechhelp.com forward slash YouTube, and all the videos will be in the event page description after the uh, YouTube video has been uploaded. But that would be a Google Plus problem. Unfortunately, I cannot fix it. Adam Trailer says, I love free, and I also love Free Fallen by Tom Petty, and that's a whole other story, I guess. I also love Free Fallen. I am I approve that message. Lynn Abate Johnson says, This is fascinating, especially since you show the varied options for comment plugins. I'm going to dig into this more and see how I can make mine more social and interactive since that's my biz and it makes sense for me. Thank you, Craig. No problem, Lynn. This is what I mean by... And that plugin's completely free. And I found it in like 15 seconds. And there's a couple other good ones out there like Discuss and just there's tons of them out there. There's almost... Nothing you can't find, and I'm going to stress that enough. Just be willing to sit down and experiment and play around with them and really do some research on them. But yeah, you're, you're right. They can have social login, so they can go to your site, and then they can just click login with Facebook, login with Google+. And let me tell you something. As a coder, as a computer guy, as a nerd, a geek, a programmer, a guy who gets into the code, if you even knew the amount of work that it takes, Adam Trailer will know this, if you knew the amount of work it would take to write a plugin to do that, or write a, write into your current website to do that, your mind would just like melt. That's why us nerds get so excited about WordPress. That's why we love WordPress because in in minutes I can deploy a feature that would take days, weeks, months to develop, engineer, and program into a currently existing website. Tomorrow will be the perfect example of this when we cover the WP Total Cache plugin. This plugin would take me years to develop an engineer. And, and in, in an afternoon, or in, in a day, two days, three days, a week, however long it takes you to get comfortable with it, you can learn how to leverage browser caching, faster load times. This is the stuff that the big boys have been using for years. The 100, 200, 300, 400, 500,000 plus dollar websites, and you on your piddly little WordPress site that cost you $80 to host through Bluehost because you clicked my affiliate link in the sidebar because they're awesome, and the you watched some guy broadcasting live on Hangouts on the Air on Google Plus put it together, and you were able to do it in an afternoon. I can't even describe to you how powerful that is. I, I'm trying to, in my own words, I'm trying to, but I'm having a lot of trouble. Comments Evolve for WordPress requires PHP 5.3 plus and will not be activated. Your current server configuration is running PHP version 5.2.17. Blah, 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 blah. And no longer use security. Okay, so that's you're telling me, James, this is something to be aware of. When he was at the plugin page, he downloaded the, the plugin that we talked about, the Comments Evolve, and it used a newer version of PHP. Now, what you can do about this, James, is you pick up the phone. And you call your web host. In my my case, I would call Bluehost. 
and I would explain to them the situation. And depending on your web host, I'm not guaranteeing you that Bluehost will do this, but they do a great job keeping up with the latest version of PHP. But if you tell them that your plugin requires a newer version of PHP, they'll usually, if they can't update it on your platform, they will be able to tell you if they were planning on releasing one. And this is part of a plugin thing because your web host determines what kind of PHP script you're going to have. But you're right, not all web hosts are up to date. And it really depends on the web host you go with. I've had very good luck with the, on that front with Bluehost as well. Albert Mazin says, I believe it was Tom who last week said that anything created on Google Blogger automatically becomes the property of Google. Do you think that this would impact creative content I would like to copyright on Blogger? Well, you're getting into legalese, and I'm not a lawyer, so don't take any of my advice uh, as legal advice. Uh, but anything that you write is your own. I don't care what platform you use. And anybody who tells you otherwise is just arguing semantics and legal paperwork and all that. And the truth of the matter is, is you don't have to worry about most of that because unless you become this huge famous blogger who like changes the world, you don't need to be as protective of your content as you think you have to be because there's no such thing as free content anymore. I hate to say it. Uh, but information wants to be free, it will be free, and there's going to be tons of people who go out there and steal your stuff. It's just part of the deal. It's part of the deal. Um, and I can't even tell you the amount of people who do it for me. So that's just, it's part of the deal, unfortunately. So I wouldn't worry about it. I would use their platform if you think you can grow your audience in a bigger way. Now, a couple things I wanted to cover here. The do's and don'ts of plugins. The do's. Do use WordPress.org regularly when you actually are vetting your comments. Make sure you are using this website, WordPress.org. Maybe you're, Make sure you can find a listing of the plugin you're interested in. Do make sure you check the, re the reviews and the star ratings of that plugin. Make sure you look at this number on the right-hand side to give you a better idea of how many people are using it. Do read all the documentation. Go through the frequently asked questions, screenshots, other notes. Do realize that a lot of these plugins have a support page with a forum. And a lot of these authors are more than happy to answer your questions. Do not be afraid to come here and post your questions. Do leave reviews for plugins if you have an opportunity to do that. Because it's a lot of help to other users such as yourself. Do do Google searches. Do perform Google searches when you're looking for the best plugins out there. And I just mean regular Google.com, type in the name of the plugin, and do some research and homework and see how other people are using it, how other people are configuring it. Don't grab every plugin that you see and install it and test it out, activate it. Don't keep installing plugins in bulk. Don't install a ton of plugins. Make sure that you go through and test your site after every single plugin you activated. I know it's tedious, I know it's frustrating, but plugins can break your website. Plugins can break other plugins. Remember, this is a massive community of people writing plugins, learning to code, and they can't possibly anticipate all of the configurations or cross configurations that can take place on your website with other pl uh, plugins at any given time. So, Regularly go in after every activation, visit your site, make sure all of your other plugins and your website is functioning properly. How do you do that? Go through all your pages. I don't mean like all of, all of all of them, but go to your pages pages, your basic pages that are there. Go to your home, go to your blog, click on your blog posts. Click on your standard post. Make sure everything there is loading. Make sure all your sidebar stuff is loading right. Make sure your menu and navigation looks good. Many cases, if something breaks your site, it'll be obvious. You can actually come here and your, your site will be blank. <laughs> I've seen it happen. If you have a problem that you cannot get to the bottom of, if for some reason you install a plugin and your website starts being really goofy, this is a pretty common practice. If you load your page and you're having blank screens and you just for the life of you can't figure out what's going on, click this little check box here, box here click deactivate and click apply. Just deactivate all of your plugins, click on your site, reload your site, and see if it fixes it. 
in most cases, that fixes your problem. So that means one of these plugins is causing problems on your website. And then, here's the magic trick that every WordPress programmer knows, and none of them talk about when it comes to plugins. Then you get to go through and activate each plugin one at a time. No, I'm sorry. I activated a kismet. Go back to your homepage. Reload it. See if it's causing that behavior that was giving you the problem. If it doesn't, go back here. Activate your second plugin. Go back to your homepage. Reload it. See if it's giving you the same problem you were getting. Go back to your plugins. Click activate it. Etc. 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 And this is a great way to find out exactly where your problem is coming in at. In many cases, it may be the plugin just doesn't work with that version of WordPress because you can update WordPress and have problems. It could also be that there's something wrong in the settings of that plugin, which when we talk about WP Total Cache tomorrow, you can expect all kinds of weird side effects on your site as you learn how to use that plugin. Pretty much part of the deal when you're working with WordPress and WordPress plugins. So don't be afraid to come in here and deactivate all your plugins and go in and manually activate them at your discretion. That's why the way they're designed is so that they're modular. You can go in and deactivate and reactivate them at any given time. Do make sure you're checking where your settings are for each of your plugins so you can keep track of what's really going on. And do pay very close attention to your site's performance. And this is what I was telling you about earlier. There is a website called loads.in. This lets you enter a website address. Let's say I go to pcmtechhelp.com and I click check. This will run a test of your site from a number of different locations. And it'll give you a resolve time, a connect time, a download time, and a download size for your website. You want to make sure that your website isn't taking days. Constantly check the performance in of check web page. There's a couple other ones where you can use. I'm going to Google check web page load times. Uh, there was another one that I wanted to do. Tools.pingdom.com. Ah, here's another great one. Webpagetest.com.org. I've used this regularly. I can go to www. I'm going to type in my uh, website here. Test the location. I can choose where I want to test it from. Sure, Chicago. Why not? I can choose the browser I want to test on. It defaults to Internet Explorer. Oops. I don't want to select from that. Start test. And this is going to go in and do a full-fledged test of your site. I recommend doing this after doing any major changes to your website to make sure if any plugs have actually caused any other issues. So this also gives you all kinds of really cool notes while it's doing your testing, by the way. You can go in here and kind of see some nice little tips and tricks. Here's some web page test partners. And say, oh, this is ridiculous. My web page load time is horrible because my theme sucks. I'm actually working on recreating my entire WordPress site right now. And you can click on it, and you can see exactly what scripts are taking forever to load. And you will notice that these YouTube videos are of my biggest culprit because the guy who developed my theme had it automatically load the entire YouTube video in the background when it was a thumbnail, which is, drives me nuts. And so when I go down through here, that's typically what causes most of my load time issues. And this is called a waterfall diagram, where you can literally go through and see all of the content that's being loaded on your page. How much load time do you want? As little as possible. If your load time's 13 seconds like mine, that's completely and utterly unacceptable. <laughs> and that's why I'm actually redoing my theme, because 90% of my load time problems are based on the theme. So then they have another option for this. If you scroll down, there's a connection view, which shows you different types of connections. And you can scroll all the way to the bottom and really get some other in-depth details. They'll flag them as red or yellow. Lots of awesome tools out there, guys, for really doing some awesome website stuff. And that, my friends, is all I have to say about plugins. And now is a good time for your questions. Now is an excellent time for your questions. Bring on the questions. My favorite part of the show, we talked about plugins. We talked about the do's and don'ts. And we covered a lot of information today. So I want to see what's really, really going on here with you guys. Tell me, tell me, what's really bothering you? <laughs> tell me what's really going on and what kind of frustrating issues you're having with WordPress because that's what this is all about. Join the community, pcmtechhelp.com forward slash community. Ask us questions. If you are curious about any other videos we've done, we've done six other videos before this on WordPress. They are in the event page description. They are also on my YouTube channel, pcmtechhelp.com forward slash YouTube. 
Megan Stockwell says, if you were to recommend a laptop, what laptop would you recommend and why? Depends on what you do, Megan. If you're a gamer, I recommend a CyberPower PC. If you are a browser person, you do everything in your web browser, I recommend a Chromebook. If you are a person who's going to college, I recommend something in between, which you can find a number of laptops at Amazon or at Tiger Direct or at Newegg. Always buy products based on review. But there's a number of really good options out there, Megan, and it really depends on you. And so I would encourage you to join the community and post what exactly you're going to be doing with it, whether it's graphics design, video editing, photos, um, gaming, all of those details make a difference in how much you should pay and shouldn't pay for a laptop. Somebody Leveled says, one time I sold a $5 Nintendo Wii system to GameStop. I still think about it today. Bad deal. I agree. Not a good deal. <laughs> Lynn Abate Johnson says, how do I create a test site to play around with like Adam recommends? Well, check out the previous videos in our show. Start with how to create your own XAMPP server which is in the event page description, by the way, and then go through each video one at a time, and you will do, you will actually create the exact same test page you saw in this video today. It's all there. It's completely free. All of the software tools are available to you. There's no reason not to do it other than going through and not wanting to go through the time to actually learn it. Lynn Johnson says, wait, use WordPress.org? I would not recommend using WordPress.org. Oh, wait, no. Yes, WordPress.org is where you download a copy of WordPress. Just go to my, seriously, just watch the videos we did earlier in the series. That will uh, see what's going on. And Adam Trailer just throws this out here. How do you not recommend a Mac? That's it. I'm done with this community. LOL, I'm kidding. And, of course, there are many applications in, a, in which a Mac is the perfect solution, namely video editing and graphics. Uh, it is the perfect solution for what you might be looking for. Thank you for that self-correction there, Adam Trailer. I appreciate trailer. I appreciate it. Albert Meza says, "Thanks again for the info, Craig. It is truly a master's course that would be no doubt take months to complete at a university. Awesome, awesome, and very true. And odds are the universities would never teach you WordPress because universities quite often do not teach what's actually being used in the real world." But that doesn't mean college is a waste of time. If you were wondering what my opinion on college is, it is at my YouTube channel. It's called College, Is It Worth It? I think it absolutely is, but only if you take it seriously. Adam Trailer says, that was me that said that, and no, you'll be fine on any platform. Blogger is fine. Adam Trailer also said, one more great point in my opinion. Once you get your site working and looking the way you want, then as the Beatles say, let it be. Have a test site to tinker with and leave the live site alone. Yes. I agree with that completely, Adam. Very much so. So much and so, so much so in fact, I dubbed that one comment of the evening. Thank you guys all for coming out tonight to this event page. Had a lot of fun talking about this subject. And uh, let's see what we have here. I want to see I want to see James Lynch's website. He told me to take a look at it. He said he changed the layout a little bit on the theme. So far, so good. I like it. Looks like you went in, looked at the theme settings, and you got your picture looking great. You got some good-looking uh, website, uh, good-looking uh, pages there. See? It's all about going in there. Isn't it amazing what you can do with just a little bit of information? Absolutely amazing. Looks like you uh, got the uh, do share plug-in, too. So a lot of cool stuff. I like seeing what you guys are creating as a result of my videos. Post them. Post them, post them, post them, post all that awesome stuff. And if you guys missed today's episode, check it out on the YouTube channel. My name is Craig Chamberlain. I'm going to check to see if there's any other questions right before I leave. But until then, again, WordPress, the missing manual. That's how I got this done. If you guys want web hosting, you would be silly not to go to the WordPress uh, Bluehost through my uh, event page affiliate link. I've used them for eight years. They are a fantastic, incredible service. Do not think twice about considering signing up for them. Consider them. They are a good company. And uh, finally, I'll throw this out there. Uh, there's more awesome content coming out tonight, uh, tomorrow, day after, and the day after that. 10 p.m. Eastern, Sunday through Thursday is when my show is. And uh, tomorrow we'll be talking about the WordPress Total Cache. Do not miss that video. If you are a serious beginner, medium, expert level WordPress user, you have to know how to use caching. It is an absolute amazing plugin. And I guarantee you guys will not be disappointed. Share this with everybody who you think will be in interested. And uh, that's all there is about that. Sarah Lamoth throws in this last question. I tutor a student in China via Skype. 
They want our sessions recorded for review, but they aren't able to access hang Hangouts on Air on Google+. How else can we record our session outside of Skype and Google+. Thanks, you rock. Sarah Lamont, that's awesome that you tutor somebody internationally, and there is a great place to check that out. I have a video on my channel called How to Record Streaming Internet Video in a 720p or 1080p HD. I give you permission to watch that video and record these sessions to your computer. How about that? Good stuff. Somebody leveled says, any other recommendations on how to sell used technology? Craigslist. Craigslist, Craigslist, Craigslist. And look for a local used store for elect for games and because uh, we have a couple of no-name ones like GameStop. And finally, finally, eBay. eBay is probably the single best place you can sell used equipment on and get the most bang for your buck. It is a massive garage sale of awesome and epic proportions. Check out eBay on that one. Thank you guys all for coming out. I appreciate all of your time. As usual, I will see you tomorrow night at 10 p.m. Eastern. As always, do not be mastered by the machine, and I'm not just talking about technology. Have a wonderful evening.